Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for these character sheets and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for better bros next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Asterius and Theseus from Hades, which have both been fucked from Greek mythology and reconstructed as the most annoying bosses in a roguelike. Now, if you take pieces of the Theseus myth, break them up, and recontextualize them for a larger audience, is that Theseus? Or is the Theseus from the original myth Theseus? Are they both Theseus? Are neither Theseus? Personally, I don't care about the ship of Theseus, unless we're shipping Theseus and Asterius. Mama had a chicken! Mama had a cow! Dad was proud! He didn't care how! We're gonna start off with Asterius, you tend to fight him first. So first, we need to be big enough to give Bart Simpson stress. Next, we need an axe to grind, with a sense of zealotry strong enough to interrupt the prince's shadow grind. Finally, we'll smash the ground so hard it explodes out in a shockwave. For stats, we'll be using the standard pointer array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Strength will be number one. Bull is the go-to animal metaphor for strength, and you are a bull. Constitution next, you have a health bar big enough to make Zagreus regret grabbing the shield, more than he normally would. Charisma after that, you're scary, but also a really chill guy once people get to know you. Follow that up with intelligence, you do have knowledge of strange ancient claw dudes. I guess those are weird dreams, but you still get some knowledge. Wisdom is a bit low, you don't really ask why you have to kill Zagreus, you just kind of do it, and we'll dump dexterity. The spin to win technique is not finesse. Asterius is a variant human, so custom in his lineage that he becomes a minotaur. I I made the joke. You don't have to. Just tell me what your favorite Hades boon is in the comments instead. That'll be more fun than making another variant human joke. Minotaurs get plus two strength and plus one constitution for thicker arms and thicker skin. Your horns are an unarmed attack that deals 1d6 plus your strength modifier in piercing damage, and you can make a goring rush with them as a bonus action after you take the dash action on your turn. If you don't charge, use hammering horns after making a horn attack as an action to shove a creature as a bonus action, pushing them to feet instead of five. Cowboys get a free skill of their choice, either persuasion or intimidation. I'll go for intimidation and the noble background for history and persuasion. Just because your dad didn't like you doesn't mean he isn't the king. We'll kick things off as a fighter rather than a barbarian because Asterius gets more powerful at higher heat levels when he wears armor. If he was a barbarian, that would make him worse. So for your fighter skills, athletics and survival will make you strong enough to break down mazes walls, but also crafty enough to find your way out. For your fighting style, great weapon fighting, let's you reroll ones and twos on damage die when you use a two-handed weapon, I think you should use a great axe. It's like a normal axe, but it's great. You also get second wind to recover 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. Nice and useful if you fight Zagreus in chamber 28 and still have to fight him again in chamber 35. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest. At higher heat levels, that spin to win technique goes on for way longer than it should. Obviously, there's some unnatural fighter shenanigans going on there. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype, rune knights are large, even if Theseus is the one in charge. You get giant's might, letting you make yourself large. You get advantage on strength checks and saves, and once per turn, you can add a d6 of extra damage to one weapon attack for a minute. You can be a double cheeseburger and amount of times per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus. You also get two runes, cool symbols that make you better. The frost rune gives you advantage on animal handling and intimidation checks, and for 10 minutes per short rest, you can add two to your strength and constitution checks. The cloud rune gives you advantage on sleight of hand and deception checks, and once per short rest, you can make one attack that should hit a creature within 30 feet of you, hit another creature within 30 feet of you instead. You tend to be within 30 feet of yourself, so you can take a hit for your brother, who killed you in life. Kind of always helping him out, aren't we? Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement, round up your strength and constitution scores, odd numbers are bad numbers, and you're not bad, you're just beefy. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one, or up to four with an action surge, chopping down gods like a lumberjack. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement, cap off your strength to make sure that you're always hitting your axe swings. I feel like there's some way to make a bull's eye joke here. You're a bull and your eye is good. I don't know. Seventh level rune knights get runic shield, letting you use your reaction to force a creature who attacks a creature within 60 feet of you to re-roll their attack an amount of times per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus. This is just part of why Theseus is so hard to hit and probably the whole reason he never fights anyone without you. You also get another rune and since you're seventh level, you can grab the hill rune, which is really tasty.
tasty. It gives you resistance to poison damage, advantage on saving throws against being poisoned, as well as resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for a minute per short rest. It's okay. Fights with Zagreus won't last more than a minute unless he used the shield. And if he's using the shield, you don't really have to worry about damage. Eighth level fighters get another ability score improvement or feat. We're going to grab the Charger feat, letting you make a special attack as a bonus action after you dash that deals an extra five damage or pushes a creature an extra five feet. It basically means that you don't have to choose which Minotaur ability you want to use, and you can use your action surge to close a gap and still get three attacks off in a round with one hitting extra hard. Ninth level fighters get Indomitable, letting you reroll failed saving throws once per long rest, which will work on Dionysus's Poison, Demeter's Chill, or Aphrodite's Sexy Juice. Missed opportunity for Wizards of the Coast, calling it Bane and not Sexy Juice. Tenth level Rune Knights get great stature, making you 3d4 inches taller than you already were as a Minotaur, and you gain Giant's Might damage, now a d8. Giant's Might? More like Giant... Smite? It sounds the same. For this level's rune, Storm Rune gives you advantage on intimidation checks and you can't be surprised while you're awake. For a minute per short rest, you can use your reaction to give advantage or disadvantage to a creature within 60 feet of you when they make an attack roll, saving throw, or ability check. You could mix this in with Runic Shield, keep your bro very, very safe. 11 level fighters get another extra attack, letting you make three attacks instead of one with your action or up to six with an action surge. I wish we could hit harder, that would be really great. 12 level fighters get another feat, like Great Weapon Master, to hit harder. It's really really great. That lets you take a negative 5 penalty to your attack rolls with a heavy weapon to add 10 to the damage rolls, which is a plus 15 modifier per hit. You could also make another attack as a bonus action if you critically hit or reduce someone to 0 HP, probably gonna be the former, Zagreus doesn't bring friends with him. 13th level fighters get another use of Indomitable, worth noting that you can use these on death saving throws as well, helping you go multiple rounds with a little godling. 14th level fighters get another ability score improvement, but we're gonna grab a feat. The Magic Initiate feat lets you learn 2 cantrips from any spell. List, grab Booming Blade from Sorcerer, which will let you make one weapon attack that deals an extra 2d8 thunder damage as an action, and if the target moves on the next turn, they take 3d8 thunder damage. Imagine getting hit by the Axe Blade, then dodging into a Shockwave. Never happens to me, couldn't be me. That's actually all I wanted for Magic Initiate. So, um, True Strike lets you remind your audience that any job you have is still work. Working in your dream job does not mean that you will always be happy, especially if you force yourself to do an excessive amount of work without a break. This one's not just for the audience, this one's also for me. Gives you advantage on a weapon attack next round just attack twice. Long Strider adds 10 feet to your movement speed for 10 minutes. Run fast. So now we're going to jump over to Paladin, giving you Lay on Hands to restore a number of hit points to a creature from a pool of 5 times your Paladin level as an action. Obviously, Asterius is healing up between fights. You also get Divine Sense to know if there are Celestials, Fiends, or Undead nearby an amount of times per day equals your Charisma modifier. That'll help you prepare for Zagreus in a cool pose with your axe on your shoulder. Second level Paladins get another Fighting Style. Defense boosts your AC by 1 when you're wearing armor, letting you get the full Plate Mail set going even even harder. You also get Paladin spells like Divine Favor to add a d4 of radiant damage to your weapon attacks, which can pair with Booming Blade to add some even more oomph to one attack. Shield of Faith adds 2 to the AC of a creature of your choice for 10 minutes, bulking up your bro even more. The real reason we're here is for Divine Smite, letting you spend a spell slot to add 2d8 radiant damage to a weapon attack or 3d8 when you're attacking a fiend or undead. Theseus is always calling Zagreus a fiend, maybe it'll count. I think undead celestial is more accurate, but undead works too. Third level Paladins can choose an Oath, Vengeance, is pretty much the Violence Oath. You get two options for a channel of divinity. Abjure enemy forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature, frightening them for a minute and reducing their speed to zero if they fail, and still having their speed if they succeed. But Vow of Enmity works so much better for Asterius, giving you advantage on attack rolls against a creature for a minute, helping you land some great weapon master hits and critically hit more with massive booming blades and smites. Fourth level paladins get another ability score improvement. Bump your constitution for 19 more HP since it scales retroactively. It should help you go against Dionysus and Demeter Boons as well. 5th level paladins don't get extra attack again because it doesn't stack, but you do get 2nd level spell slots to improve your smite, and warding bond will give a bro of your choice plus 1 to their AC and saving throws, resistance to all damage, with the caveat that you also take damage when they take damage, you have to be within 60 feet of each other, so that's 2 bros, chilling in Elysium, less than 60 feet apart because they want to maintain the benefits of warding bond. Our capstone is the 6th level of paladin for aura of protection, letting creatures within 10 feet of you add your charisma modifier to their saving throws, that also applies to you, but it mostly applies to your buddy. You gotta keep your bro safe. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you hit really, really hard. With the action surge, all your spell slots on smites and great weapon master mixing together to be 14 d8 plus 60, 12 plus 90 damage in a single round or around 182 with median rolls. You're also great at closing distance with extra speed from a casting of long strider and ways to attack after dashing. Finally, you've got a bunch of HP, resistance to physical hits, and high AC to be a heck of a tank. 
For weaknesses, you need to be up close to deal damage, with a negative dexterity modifier preventing you from shooting anyone. Low dexterity also means saving throws could be an issue, and fireballs are pretty nasty and pretty common. Finally, the charger feat is a little redundant with the minotaur stuff, even if it buffs it slightly, just grabbing the mobile feat or bumping your stats might be a better investment. But the best investment is friendship, and you've got the coolest bro in the entire world. Chase people down and keep them busy, while the champion of Elysium pumps them full of spears. Speaking of champions... Yeah! And they want to beat me up! All for nothing! All for nothing, huh? start off with our goals for this build. First, we need the power of the gods, and I'm not talking calligraphy. Next, we need to bring Brittany back for some spears to hit Zagreus one more time. Finally, we'll be a pain in the ass to hit. Just the absolute worst. For stats, we're using the standard point buy from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just watch those multi-classing minimums. Put your constitution at 15. You are irritatingly hard to take down. Strength at 14. This will actually end up being the same as your constitution after the racial bonuses, helping you throw your spear with some serious force. Wisdom at 13. The gods like you almost as much as they like the little fiend boy. Maybe that should be charisma. Set charisma to 12, just in case. Dexterity can go down to 10, you don't really need it for anything, and put intelligence down at 8. Theseus has big jock energy. Remember, a himbo is only a himbo if they're large, kind, and unintelligent. If they're just large and unintelligent, that's a jock. Theseus is undead when you fight him in the Colosseum, so we're gonna go with Reborn. We should probably have done that for Asterius too, but I'm not gonna get to use Minotaur again until like a Beta Ray Bill, so I'm gonna leave him a Minotaur. Reborn, get plus two to one stat and plus one to another stat. Round your strength and constitution both up to 16 for some good fighting stats. Your knowledge of a past life lets you add a d6 to a skill check and amount of times per day equals your proficiency bonus, making sure you hear the roar of the crowd with a perception check. Your deathless nature gives you resistance to poison damage advantage on poison saving throws and death saving throws and you don't have to eat drink breathe or sleep and can instead stand still for four hours to get a long rest off probably just enough time to wait for Zagreus to clear Asphodel and Tartarus your ancestral legacy gives you two skills for free like performance and persuasion to raise the roof and you can take the soldier background for athletics and intimidation as well as ground vehicle proficiency to ride around in a chariot we're gonna kick things off as a cleric for more godlike power at level one you get two skills from the cleric list religion and history we'll let you know about gods and battles even if you're still a little bit pig-headed. And your brother is cow-headed. It's like an animal farm in Elysium. War clerics are better fighters than fighters are at level 1, because Wizards really wants you to play a healing class. You get proficiency with all weapons and heavy armor right away, and War Priest, letting you make another weapon attack as a bonus action, an amount of times per day equal to your Wisdom modifier. Currently, that's only one, but we can round that up in a second for another spear. Buff that with Divine Favor. That's a free spell from the War Cleric list, adding a d4 of radiant damage to your weapon attacks for a minute, depending on your concentration. Put a little purple streak on the spear. Shield of Faith is a better defensive option, adding two to a creature's AC for 10 minutes, depending on your concentration, which pairs nicely with your other giant shield. I'm not talking about Asterius, you do also have a literally giant shield. For your other cleric spells, Cure Wounds heals 1d8 plus your Wisdom modifier as an action to a creature you touch. I don't think Asterius can heal all of his wounds between fights. What's a back rub between bros? Protection from evil and good gives a creature advanced protection against aberrations, celestials, fiends, fey, elementals, and undead. The funky stuff has disadvantage attacking the chosen one and can't charm, possess, or frighten them. Use it on yourself, all buffs go to the champion of Elysium. For cantrips, Sacred Flame forces a dexterity saving throw on a creature, dealing a d8 of radiant damage if they fail, reflavor it to look like a gatling gun strapped to the front of your chariot. Word of Radiance forces a constitution saving throw on creatures within 5 feet of you, dealing a d6 of radiant damage to those that fail if you'd rather spin to win. Finally, Thalmaturgy does a bunch of flavor stuff, but I'm focusing on making your voice louder. You gotta play to the back row, you know? We're gonna jump over to Fighter right away now. They're great at throwing weapons especially with the thrown weapon fighting style, which lets you add two to the damage of your attacks with thrown weapons. It almost makes them good. You also get second wind, letting you recover 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest, helping you get back on the horse, or I guess the horseless chariot in your case. Second level fighters get an action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest for three attacks per round at level three, kind of like a monk, but a monk can add divine favor to all of those and the extra damage from thrown weapon fighting, so this is still pretty good. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype, and if you're the champion of Elysium, obviously, we'll go champion. Uh, but we're going to spell it like Cavalier in the graphics and give it the abilities of Cavalier because we're actually going Cavalier. I was lying. We're not going champion. You get an extra skill like animal handling to be better friends with full cows as well as half cows, probably. You're born to the saddle, giving you advantage on saving throws to stay on your mount. Even if you do fall off your mount, you land on your feet and you can mount or dismount with five feet of movement instead of half should help you with your bull riding. Like at a bar, obviously, you want to 
series are just pros. Finally, you get on Wavering Mark, letting you hit a creature with a melee attack and give them disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures that aren't you. If they do manage to hit another creature, you can hit them with an attack as a bonus action on your next turn and deal extra damage equal to half your fighter level. You have a number of these marks equal to your strength modifier, so you can punish people for hitting Asterius, then he can punish people for hitting you. That's what I call the power of being boy for of being buddies. The power of being buddies. Four level fighters get an ability score improvement. We'll start off with strength. That's how you hit stuff and mark stuff. You're not even really using your wisdom for your cleric things yet. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you throw two spears with your action or up to four with an action surge. Theseus was a great warrior, but he also would have been a great pitcher. And he would even get to work in the same building. It's still a big Coliseum. Six level fighters get another ability score improvement. Cap off your strength modifier for maximum accuracy and damage with your pitches. Speed is one thing, but if you're not throwing strikes, what's the point? Seventh level cavaliers get warding maneuver, letting you defend yourself or a buddy within five feet of you by adding a D8 to their AC as a reaction when they're attacked. Even if the attack lands, you still give the person you're defending resistance to the damage. You have an amount of these equal to your constitution modifier for long rest, helping you wield that shield. Even better than you already were. Eighth level fighters get another ability score improvement, and hey, let's invest in constitution for more warding maneuvers consistently add extra AC when you need it. Back over to cleric now. Second level clerics get a channel of divinity. All of them can use it to turn undead, forcing a wisdom saving throw on undead creatures. Failing that, they have to dash away on their turn. Probably not going to work on Zagreus, but it should stop the crowds from swarming you after a fight. Guided Strike is more Theseus, in my opinion, from the war domain, letting you add 10 to an attack roll and pretty much guarantee you hit. Third level clerics can choose second level spells. War domain clerics get magical weapon for free, adding one to your attack and damage rolls with a weapon and making them magical in terms of overcoming resistances for an hour depending on your concentration. It's bad with thrown weapons because of the uh, throwing, but maybe you hold the spear in your hand for a little bit. They're even versatile. Enhance ability gives a creature advantage on skill checks of a certain type. Strength also doubles their carrying capacity. Dexterity makes it so they don't take falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less, and constitution will give them 2d6 temporary HP. Whatever you choose, it lasts for an hour depending on your concentration. Just make yourself better. You are the champion after all. Fourth level clerics get an ability score improvement, cap off your constitution modifier for a bunch of HP, and another use of warding maneuver every long rest. Fifth level clerics can learn third level spells. War domain clerics get crusader's mantle for free, which is like divine favor, but for all of your allies within 30 feet, getting that extra d4 of radiant damage instead of just you. See, Theseus isn't selfish. He'll give Asterius some buffs, as long as he also gets buffed. Sending lets you send a message to someone on the same plane, or even on another plane with a 5% failure rate. It has to be 25 words or less. So, hey, Zeus, Athena buffed Hades' kid, help me stomp him to spite both of them, is 25 words or less. That should be effective. You can also fully destroy undead of challenge rating one half or lower when you use turn undead. Hopefully you don't roast your fans too hard. Sometimes they don't take kindly to that, and they still keep coming back twice a week and complaining about being roasted instead of just leaving. That's gotta suck for Theseus. I can't think of anyone else that happens to. Six level clerics get another use of Channel of Divinity, and War Domain clerics get another way to use it with War God's Blessing, which is a guided strike, but for a buddy. Plus 10 doesn't just get rid of Asterius's great weapon fighting penalty. It actually gives him plus five extra, just to be sure. A true power couple of buddies. Just a couple of buddies right there. Seventh level clerics get fourth level spells. War Domain gets Stone Skin for free, giving you resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for up to an hour, depending on your concentration, helping you turn your fantastic HP into something extra hefty. Death Ward stops a creature from hitting zero HP the first time they should in the next eight hours, hitting one HP instead. Hold on for one extra hit of pure crap, then second wind to heal and bring the pain. Eighth level clerics get another ability score improvement or feat, and I think it's about time we started working on our wisdom modifier with the skill expert feat, giving you another skill like survival to navigate a labyrinth, expertise in a skill like survival to navigate a labyrinth effectively, and plus one to an ability score like wisdom for better casting and better survival to navigate a labyrinth effectively. You also get divine strike, letting you add an extra d8 of damage to one attack per round. Only the sharpest spears will do for you. Ninth level clerics can learn fifth level spells. Flame strike is free from the war domain, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder of light that deals 4d6 fire and 4d6 radiant damage to creatures that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Zagreus is fast, but he could mess up if he's being trampled by a bull. Tenth level clerics get divine intervention, letting you ask a god for help somehow. Roll a d100. If you roll lower than your cleric level, the god will help. Your DM decides how. Maybe it's a huge AoE that's harder than hell to avoid. I don't want to put words in their mouth. If you succeed, you can't try again for a week. If you fail, you could try again tomorrow. It isn't terribly consistent, but it is really strong. But at the 11th level of cleric, you can learn six level spells like planar ally, which lets you bring a being from another plane to send help. And then it does. The thing it does, the thing from the other plane helps you in a way, then might ask for something from you or it won't. 
don't. It depends on the DM. Again, it's pretty vague, but it's sixth level. So pout a little bit if they don't give you anything good. Our capstone is the 12th level of cleric for one last ability score improvement. Bump your wisdom up a little bit higher for slightly harder to resist radiant blasts from your sacred flame turret. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, clerics make great tanks when you pair it with cavalier. Obviously, you have a bunch of HP and ways to keep damage off with shield of faith and stone skin. You're also able to ask the gods for help. That might be vague, but the gods are generally pretty tough. They'll probably help you out in a helpful way. Finally, your channels of divinity will help your dump truck of a tag team partner run people over more consistently. For weaknesses, your casting modifier is only plus three, which stinks considering you mostly invested in cleric. You're also low on dexterity, so big AoEs could lead to big OOEs. That's owies. Finally, thrown weapons just ain't that good. Invest in melee for great weapon master or ranged weapons for sharpshooter, you'll just be happier. But really, the only thing you need to be happy is fraternity. The bond between Asterius and Theseus is something Zagreus would never understand because he's an only child and also because he probably has brain damage a minotaur kept stepping on his skull. Just make sure your fights are entertaining enough for the gods. Otherwise, you might start to feel the fire underneath your asphodel. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We're making double videos every day this month. Join the Patreon for these sheets and a whole bunch more and sub to Duloc and Mango to watch us play some Hades.